My main concern is I ran out of the paint right on these last two doors. This is all I need to get a decent coverage on. Yeah, I'm just a little nervous about it, but I did try to blend it a little bit. Welcome back to another episode of Broke Premier, guys. If you are new to the channel and you like seeing cars go from being worth $500 to being worth $5,000 in a short amount of time, then you're in the right place. Make sure to go down, hit the subscribe button, and click the notifications bell so you get alerted when I put out new episodes. Also, if you're new to the channel, we've previously been working on my 2005 Hyundai Tucson that I picked up for $700. It has 136,000 miles, and as you can see, it needed a paint job pretty bad. Uh, it also has something going on with the engine, believe it to be out of time, and now I believe it also needs a head gasket again. That is something I have to tackle in the future, but in the last episode I started to tackle this, Karen ended up calling the cops on me again, so kind of slowed down my pace of how everything was moving, kind of just made everything shift backwards a little bit, speaking with the police. But now I'm thinking I finally have enough paint, I should have everything I need to finish this thing today. So the first thing I want to do is I want to tackle kind of giving it a light scuff again because I know some things have landed on this car since the night. Give it a quick scuff, quick wipe down. Probably won't look like much to you guys, but it'll definitely make a difference of everything else adhering. So I'm going to get started with that and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Everything is scuffed, everything is wiped down. Uh, what I wanna do now is just start putting on the paint. I want to try to finish the door and the primer spots first, but I think overall I'm going to start putting a coat over the whole car, just so I kinda know how much paint I have and make sure that I get at least a dusting over everything. So anyway, I'm gonna get started with that. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys the headlights on the Mustang. They came up pretty good, they're a little wavy, but I think it was just because I rushed the job. But they did come out a heck of a lot better than they were. If you remember, they were completely yellow. And I honestly just did this so that I could see better at night because I felt like the yellow was eating up the light and it wasn't getting through the lens. So I'm hoping that at least from now on, I'll have better night vision, that's really my goal. With all that said, I'm gonna get started with the painting. See how it goes. See you guys in a bit. I have been able to paint most of the car, mostly. It's a little patchy, I'm not too happy about it. But overall, I think there's a good enough coat that if I throw a clear coat, it'll look pretty good. These little light spots are what I'm afraid of. 
I don't know. I think I'm gonna go for it, see how it turns out. If it looks decent, I'm gonna leave it. It's never gonna look perfect for me doing it out here, especially. But if I can get it to look 80, 90% good, someone complains about the paint, I say, yeah, we can work a little bit. But my main concern is I ran out of the paint right on these last two doors. This is all I need to get a decent coverage on. Yeah, I'm just a little nervous about it, but I did try to blend it a little bit. Did get a little heavy. Fortunately, this section of the paint is actually the best quality of the paint on the car, like the side doors area was where the paint was the best. I think it'll look decent. It's definitely gonna look a tinge darker than what I have right now, which is the only thing that's making me nervous. Either way, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna send it, see what happens. Hopefully it looks good. If not, I go back and I buy two more cans of paint, two more cans of clear coat and do it again. But I am trying to finish this project up. It is taking way too long. So I think this is going to be it. So I'm gonna let the paint dry for a little bit more. Then I'm gonna throw on some clear coat. I might actually start clear coating the other side just to see how it's turning out so far. So I'm gonna get started. Let's get at it. All right, the paint is done, came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy. Uh, of course, it's not perfect. I'd say like 80, 85%. Uh, some spots you can still see, a lot that I can see because I did it. But overall, I'm pretty dang happy about it. This blend came out good. I know where the blends are because I did it, but overall, I don't think I'd even notice had I not done them. The roof, I believe, has a good coat on. I want to get a little more up here. I did try to spray it thick when I did it. I think I'm going to leave it though. I might do just the buff up there in a very light wet sand. The rest of the body I'm really happy with. Of course there's like waviness and stuff just from the spray and how I sanded everything out. Definitely gonna have to brick sand it down a little bit and give it a nice buff. But I'm happy. I'm happy with it. The door blended in nice, especially with the old paint. I'm just, uh, I'm really content with how well this all came out. I mean from what it was and I'm gonna put a picture up here quick. Just kind of give you a quick idea and then to what it is now. I'm just, I'm more than happy with it. So yeah, I will probably have to wet sand, brick sand it down a little bit. I'll probably do that in a few episodes once this paint cures a little bit. I don't want it to fall off so easily. But what I do want to do right now before it gets too late is I want to take off all the plastic, all the tape before all the paint cures and it kind of starts tearing the paint instead of just pulling away from the paint. So. I'm gonna start doing that right now. After that, I think that's gonna wrap up for this evening. Then tomorrow, I'll probably break into doing some engine work. So that's it. See you in a bit.
All right guys, it is the next day. Everything dried up nice. Everything came off great as far as all the wrapping. Car is looking pretty sharp. I'm really happy, like especially these top parts. I don't even think I'm about to touch this door or this door as far as the top section, as far as sanding. Trying to look at the top of this fender. Eh, I'm probably gonna have to touch the top of this fender a little bit. Top of this fender, yeah, this fender needs a little love. Top of this door, a little love. Same here, but <laughs> I guess that other spot is the one spot I don't have to touch. I'm just really happy with how good it came out. It looks sharp. It looks way better than it ever did, at least as far as I've owned it. Trunk is looking good. I remember I mentioned to you guys I wasn't going to peel off those emblems because it was going to be a pain, and then I peeled off the emblems. Uh, I decided to peel them off just because they were kind of falling off pretty easily, so I don't think they had much life less to them. And I thought if I start taping them, I'm going to lose one or two anyway, so I might as well just yank them. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is kind of lay them out perfectly how they should be, put tape over top of them, and then flip that tape upside down and re-put the adhesive on it, and then put it on the car. That's my goal. It's gonna be down the road after I do all the wet sanding and buffing on this car. But what I would like to do right now is start tackling this engine. I'm pretty confident it's out of time. So the first thing I wanna do is take out the spark plugs, get the first cylinder on top dead center, and then I want to start removing the valve cover and so on. But first I wanna set everything up to be able to check the timing belt and to verify that cylinder one is on compression stroke hitting top dead center. So that's my goal. I'm gonna get after it. Talk to you guys in a bit. All right, guys, I got it to what I believe to be TDC, uh, our top dead center, looks pretty good. The next thing I wanna do is start unhooking the belts and kind of some of the components to get towards taking off that head. So I'm just gonna start moving, kind of trying to take apart the serpentine belt and probably, I think there's a power steering separate belt as well. And then I also want to start taking apart just some of the stuff around the valve cover and all that. So I'm gonna get started, talk to you guys in a bit. All right, so I was able to get the belts off. I also believe I'm at top dead center. I don't necessarily want to take the head off today, so I'm trying to be careful as to what parts I touch. I most likely won't be able to get back to this thing for three to four days. I just don't want there to be any type of surface rust or anything on the head or on the block. I'm guessing the head's probably aluminum, the block's probably steel. I don't want there to be any surface rust on it when I take it off. So I'm trying to avoid taking it off completely today, but I do want to get as close as possible. So my next goal, what I would like to start tackling right now is the exhaust. I believe I should be able to get it off. It hasn't been too long that's been on there so it should come off fairly easy uh, anyway I'm gonna get started with that talk to you guys in a bit I was able to get the exhaust manifold off. I ended up pulling off the power steering pump as well. It was just kind of perfectly right there, kind of in the way a little bit. I figured if I could get the exhaust off, just everything on the front side's almost done. I ended up disconnecting the variable valve timing. This is a variable valve timing solenoid. And then I ended up disconnecting the oil pressure sending switch, something like that. So those are all set up. Now the next thing I want to start tackling is taking off the coil pack here for the spark plugs. And then there's 
something else mounted down here. I don't know if that's part of the timing of the coil pack, but there's something else mounted just below that. I'm not sure if I have to mess with it, but regardless, there's a couple bolts right here, and I believe there's probably one in the back somewhere. Oh, it looks like there was, but he left it off. So I just have to get those two bolts off, and then I wanna start tackling this space the intake manifold area. Uh, not quite sure how that's on there or how it mounts, but at the very least, I want to take out the fuel rail. I'm trying to see if the fuel rail, I don't think it's gonna be flexible. Oh, it is. Okay, so the fuel rail is a little flexible. I can move that around. So back here, you can probably see my hand. Got a little movement. So I'm gonna disconnect the fuel rail all of the fuel injectors and just start to alleviate everything in the back area here. So I'm gonna get started with that. See you guys in a bit. All right, I got most of the stuff off. Uh, I didn't want to touch the coolant kind of thermostat area because I don't want coolant to go everywhere. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be touching the car probably for a couple of days now. Now I have to go work in the salon for a few days. So I don't want to take anything that's going to have fluids around, laying around, especially after the cops and Karen and all that. So I'm trying to keep everything together that could leak anything at the moment. But I was able to get one of the timing covers off. I did pull off the valve cover for like a minute just to kind of see what's going on to see if everything made sense. It looks to be completely opposite in time. Like literally the cams are 180 degrees out of time of the crankshaft. Kind of confused. I mean, that would make a lot of sense for the timing issue if it was completely backwards. So yeah, I am a little confused that it's that bad. It would make a lot more sense. The guy says he knows what he's doing. Head gaskets, I would think he'd be pretty close on time. Could be a dumb mistake, could have been something simple. Probably could have just took off the timing belt and spun it 180 degrees and be right. It does happen, uh, but regardless, like I said, now we do have to do the head gasket, so that's where we're at at this point anyway. But like I was saying, everything is pretty much off. I didn't want to take off the engine mount because then I had to leave it on a jack stand. And again, with the cops and everything, I just I want to avoid anything looking like it's left apart right now. So I want to leave that together for now uh, until I'm able to get back at this thing. But once I do, basically we're going to put this thing up on jack stands, take off that engine mount, take off the rest of the timing cover, take off the pulley that's on the crank, and just verify that this thing is in top dead center, at least for piston one. Also, I want to look into taking out the water pump since I know that it was weeping. I believe it to be probably the fail point of this whole entire issue that started this engine getting taken apart is probably the water pump and the guy never replaced it or maybe he did and he got a bad one off the jump but i don't think he did i'm pretty sure it's original so anyway in the next episode my goal would be to take off the head and try to replace the head gasket and put it back together at the least finish the head gasket process from that far probably fixing the timing won't be too much of a big deal uh, i did as i mentioned get a timing chain timing chain tensioner it does look to be new i'm not sure it could be used i'll kind of find out when i pull it out whether the tensioner has any kind of friction to it at all or any play uh, but it does look to be pretty new but anyway like i said i think i'm going to try to wrap up this whole thing next episode and then try to see if we can get this thing running normal with all that said i think that is going to wrap up this episode of broken mirror so i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and i'll catch you again on thursday later guys